Welcome back to the channel, from steel to wood, I'm Joe and I'm doing projects. If you're new to the channel, <laughs> this is all about doing projects, either in the garage, working on steel, or either going to the forest, collecting wood, and most of the time is with the tools I made. That's therefore the name from steel to wood. Today's project involved this brand new case 430 1965 is fairly new to me <laughs> uh, the project uh, on this machine I did update a few things on this machine especially for safety rocks hydraulics air remotes uh, what's next on this machine put lights on the rocks if ever possible a safety belt and First is to completely redo the wiring on it. Uh, it's all obsolete and unsafe. The first thing I did is put a fuse. First thing, first ever thing to do. You don't want that machine to catch fire uh, in the forest. And while I'm there, I'm going to add the extinguisher and a lot of stuff. If that interests you, you can join me in the project. Okay, this is it. I removed the hood so far. <laughs> By the way, if you wonder if I ever check the fluids in that uh, engine, yes I do. Look at that out, check that. Very easy. Okay, engine R. So there's a dipstick if you want, but you can look at the puddle. That's not even a quarter of an ounce, so that's good. That means it's, it's still full. Uh, from here to here, this is the hydraulic oil. Two, three drops, that means it's still full. And from here to here, this is the rear differ differential gear oil. Very small drop. So you get the point. <laughs> I'm only checking for the, the leaks and I'm going to top up according to what's left on the ground. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so far I undo the uh, regulator. I did mark with uh, marker the uh, pattern. So I have the armature, the field, and the battery. Uh, this is actually generator, it's not alternator. So this is armature, field, and battery is actually, um, yeah, this one, red. So that goes to uh, battery. Well, actually it goes to the, uh, goes to the solenoid, but this is where the uh, main battery connectors is. I remove the switch. It's here. This is the original switch, although it works good. It doesn't have much life left to it, so I want to uh, redo most of the wire. So this one goes to the ignition. This one goes to the battery, so you can see. <laughs> this is charging the battery, actually. That's bad. And this one goes to uh, goes to the uh, IDOT light or LED light, and goes back to combine to a uh, field. And this is a nice 
household electrical cable. Not bad actually, but uh, the end is quite loose and I, I'm going to redo it. So this is the going to be the new switch uh, this time. Okay, I have here, this is battery. Actually power coming from this accessory and it will be running also when the uh, machine is running ignition so typically lights horn whatever accessory will be here and this one ignition will be the coil only and this one is for the starting coil or the starting solenoid starter and the idea from this switch to the other, which is only three pins. Uh, the benefit for that, uh, you can see I have a substantial, large, deep cycle battery on it. And I'm going to fit LED lights. And by putting the lights on accessory, I can put the switch. Okay, this is the off position. This is accessory. So by putting it in accessory, lights can come on, but yet the coil is not going to be energized. So I'm going to, I'm not going to, so basically I could put the lights on as long as I want. Remember LED lights draw so few amps. You can put them on like an hour or so. You won't draw the battery much. You put that here on this is on when the engine runs and this is start at start uh, actually at run it's going to energize the coil so this coil is going to be energized and the points if it happened that the rotor is stopped at where the points are touching is going to draw the battery battery and it's also going to, look at that, it's cracked. Must not be good having a crack into the coil. First time I see that, oh, it's actually cracked. Wow, sorry about that. Anyways, I'm going to burn the points if I leave this at on for too long without running the machine. If I put that to accessory, I can leave it as long as I want. That's the idea. Uh, this is a rather odd switch I got on Amazon. So you get the horn, push, push. And there's like three options for lights, which are low, high, and I don't know. And the last option is uh, one alone. So it goes from, from the battery to horn to uh two and three this first position is only this one second position is those both and the third position is only this one so i don't know what to do exactly we see i like to put those lights on it would it be like here but i don't know how i'm going to run the cable or the uh, the wires through that uh, wall and on the top, this is where the LED lights will be fit. So, not quite sure on this one. So I'm not going to make a video of uh, running all the wires. I'm going to show you the end result because uh, it needs a lot of concentration. Make sure that I don't miss or mess anything. So, I see you in a few hours. That's about time for an update. As you can clearly see outside, it's dark. So most of the day I've gone through while uh, rewarding those that whole thing. <sighs> and I'm halfway done. I haven't done anything yet here, just replacing that old stuff. I show you that. Okay, I have the new key switch. I have that new switch with the horn, the first set of light 
first set, second set, and the third set. From this side, I did uh, add a new fuse for all the accessories, 20 amps, and it's uh, fed with or through this relay because I don't want 20 amp to go through that switch. So it's only going to feed coil solenoid and this really for the remaining uh, accessories. I have the horn on the opposite side. I've put back the regulator. I've cleaned all the contacts. I've run a ground up to this side, two spare grounds uh, for the future, never know. And the amp meter is rewired properly with proper size of wires. So this is it. I'm only left to connect back the positive. So this is the moment that I hate most is connecting that. Whew. No fire yet. Far so good. I don't see any smoke. I hate that I shouldn't. If I was a smart guy, I would disconnect the negative, not the positive. That's done now. Switch on. Lies here. Was it good? Electrical work is uh, kind of stuff that you want to be uh, very concentrated. So I kind of finished the project. <laughs> but I'm going to show you what I did. I use a small cable. Uh, you know, this is the kind of cable uh, for outdoor extension cord. So it's still flexible, have a very good thick insulation on it, very uh, uh, strong to uh, wear. And I do like to use the run 12 volt in it, so I just, you, you kind of use it like a regular wire. Uh, now it goes through the bottom tube of the rubs, goes up there. And yes, I put flashers and lights and a working light here so I can see right behind the tractor. This is what I, uh, I was missing on the uh, side by side. Okay, I'm going to jump up there and show you that. So this is the best scaffolding you can find. Um, good grip, by the way. Okay, so I've cut so I've, uh, the rail holes on the top and also to be able to connect from that beam up to here. So I made all the connection outside. 
connection with uh, soldering. I did put uh, caps and tape as well so it won't come off. And uh, I tuck them in and they are also through that kind of looming and the edges are smooth. So it should be good for a few decades. So I run the remaining wires through the other side. Same thing for this working light pointing down. I hope you don't get dizzy. So this is the back of the machine. I have this working light specifically looking down. Those two lights are facing. Uh, <clears throat> those two lights, this is exactly the same light I have on the side by side and the other tractor. They are very good lights. Okay. Aha. This is something I wanted to do since a long time on this machine. I did that with Dave on the other machine like two years ago, two years BC before COVID. I show you the trick here. So, first of all, very simple material. This is ABS, three inches pipe. I glued inside a small piece of uh, pipe. This is open at the bottom. Uh, the bolt, there's one bolt that goes through the very bottom of this first sleeve. Second sleeve is just standing by itself on top of the other one. I have huge tie wraps that tie against the uh, post. Put one loose extra sleeve. Put that here. And by the way, yeah, can go further that way. It's going to stay centered. It's only tie wraps and a bolt at the bottom to support the wall weight. Tie wraps are only there to maintain the balance. And it's plenty enough. It's heavy duty, large tie wraps. But what is very interesting, what is that? So for Dave that knows me, I love mayonnaise. This is the Hellman's mayonnaise. This is a huge 1.5 liter uh, mayonnaise jar. And then you just push that upside down. And it's going to last the other one I put on the other case, it's been there like for two years now and still in good shape. Not expensive, you can see through. This is the, uh, you can see through the extinguisher and then rain is going to fall down. So it's not going to collect any rain, moisture, and it's available. You see? And will it fly with the wind? Nope, absolutely not. Uh, next update. I was willing to do so since a long time. Wow, seat belt. So you can find it on Amazon. I had to bolt it through the uh, steel uh, seat pan. Why so? Because there's, suspen su there's suspension on it. You can tilt it backward. So, and then if you see that, there are springs. And this is how you get a very smooth ride with that, that machine. But bouncing up and down, well, I can do that by hand, but you kind of get the point that I'm going to get this to uh, choke me. <laughs> so that's a nice addition, for, especially for this machine. Bolt. 
I have plenty of good material to support a small uh, carriage head. Okay, contact. So I have horn. I have the lights on the rocks, and I also have the uh, amber and red light in the back. If I turn again, I have the front light adding up, and I turn third time, I get those blinking. Mm, that nice. <laughs> It's not even played at all or three. <laughs> Anyways, that's funny. Okay, next part. This is also something I was wanting to do uh, before it's too late. So I have this fender installed a bit higher, previously, along with the uh, valves. And I do have this. I need to see. I'm standing on that, that's good because the ribs are new, but I need steps.